Hello everybody, uh, this is going to be a demo on using a Flowstorm debugger to debug ClojureScript applications. Um, this thing you see here in the background, it's a ClojureScript application entirely written in ClojureScript with no libraries. Um, we're going to use uh, this as an example of something to connect the debugger and try to figure out how it works. Uh, I'm using this because it's a production, currently production application, so it's not super complicated, but at least it has a, a, a bunch of, uh, of, of features. Um, okay, but before connecting the debugger, uh, let me show you what I'm uh, running here. So I'm running Shadow CLJS. This is a, I have this on the script, too, but it's a, it's a Shadow CLJS watch that currently has the Flowstorm dependency added. I'm adding it here. Uh, you can add it on your Shadow CLJS Eden uh, dependencies, but I'm adding it here, so uh, I'll show you how to use the debugger without even modifying the application source code. And uh, yes, apart from that, I have uh, an Emacs uh, connected to a REPL here. Uh, I think I have a REPL, yeah. And uh, yeah, so that that's pretty norm, pretty standard. Uh, set up for uh, closure script applications so yeah let's uh, go and connect the debugger so for connecting the debugger i have this uh, script here so i don't need to type this uh, entire command every time but it's basically running flowstorm so it's uh, it's going to include a flowstorm dependency latest version and just running start debugger the arguments here are the mrepl port shadow clcs starts so shadow clcs is starting on port 46000 and uh, we are connecting to that uh, repl type is shadow and uh, the build id is analysis viewer and then I'm, I'm adding like a dark theme and some extra styles for a bigger font since i think it are going to work a little better for the demo so let's run the debugger and it's going to uh, connect to the process. Okay, we have the debugger running here. Let me move this aside. Um, yeah, as you can see, the debugger started and a, a, a different from, from starting from closure. It's uh, highlighting in green a couple of things here. This is, means that uh, it has connected to a REPL and it has connected to a runtime, so the thing on the browser. If you reload the browser page or whatever, it's going to uh, reconnect to it. Um, so yeah. Uh, um, okay, so let's uh, try to instrument something. So same thing as um, closure. Um, the bar, you have the browser here when you can browse all the namespaces that the closure script compilers knows about. Uh, we can filter it here so everything starts with analysis viewer. And uh, one experimental kind of experimental feature for closure script, but uh, I'm um, using in this, uh, I'm going to use in this case, it's instrument the entire um, code base. So you can click like this, select all namespaces, and go like instrument namespaces full. Uh, this is going to instrument everything. Uh, you can see here, it is uh, basically uh, walking over every form in every namespace, uh, instrumenting it. Uh, because uh, we are instrumenting uh, our views also, which are uh, reaction components, we will um, we'll need to remount them after after we instrument it because yeah the, the components currently mounted here are not the one we just instrumented this is pretty straightforward we can go to our uh, emacs uh, session here and remount it, the the ui what what this is doing it's calling uh, just uh, remounting the the reaction component. It's it's the function that Shadow CLJS is like calling after each load. Uh, so let's call it once. So it um, it remounts everything. Okay, because it remounted everything, now we can see here um, 
that the, the debugger already uh, uh, catches a bunch of stuff. So let's go to the overview tree first. Um, yeah, so first thing, let's go there. It's, um, so it's, it's, it's run the mount UE function and you can expand this. Uh, you can click here and expand this tree. And yeah, you, you can see that all, all the code that executed for rendering all the views there. So you can see here like the main screen didn't got any argument, but it generated this uh, screen with these divs. You can look at the same for the top bar or collapsible tabs or whatever. But what I, I like to do here is that probably we are not interested in all this stuff in what it took to render the entire thing. Uh, so I will hit Control L here to get rid of uh, all the debugger state. But now that everything is instrumented, uh, if I just drag the mouse here, okay, you are going to see that the debugger already reacted to a, a couple of things. So a lot of on mouse move uh, executed there. Uh, uh, you can right click here and go to trace. Let's make this bigger. And yeah, it has to do with uh, this um, on mouse uh, function we have registered here. Uh, uh, this means that we probably instrumented too far. Uh, so let's uh, let's clear the state here and try to uninstrument the views. And uh, yeah, this is a view. And also this is a view. And let's uh, instrument them again. But I'm going to use likes instrumentation for the views, which means just the uh, outer function uh, calls and function returns. So we're not going to uh, instrument like inner functions. Um, we don't. Are, we are not going to get all these uh, uh, even uh, registration functions. Uh, so let's instrument this like. And now let's uh, remount again. Okay. And yeah, now let's get rid of the state here and go here. And as you can see. Uh, if we now like drag the mouse or whatever here, it's not going, going to react uh, to all those uh, things. So, but now let's try to uh, use the application. For example, uh, what happen if I now try to scroll here? I, I will try to make a zoom on the map. So, I'm making one zoom there, and yeah, it, it already captured this zoom increment, which is inside the events this uh, reframe application. We can go to the overview here and we can see an overview of what happened. So this, uh, this event fire and then a bunch of subscription fire and probably in the end some views fire. So now we can use this to explore the application. For example, uh, here we have the arguments for the event and what the event return. Uh, this is the, the reframe uh, contains a reframe database. So if I want to inspect this, I can click the inspector to inspect the arguments. And the first one is the reframe database. So we can uh, use the inspector to inspect the database. Uh, if we find something we are interested in, some uh, sub map here in a nested structure that we want to keep working from the REPL, we can define this value. We can choose B here, whatever, and going back to Emacs, and we are going to have it on uh, under JSB there. So we can keep working with that value from the REPL. Uh, okay, so if we want to step over whatever happened, we can click here, go to trace, and yeah, here we have, uh, we can step over our code, try to figure out what happened with the with the event execution and yeah we can do that for uh, whatever code we have traced so subscriptions and, and views and, and everything um, so yeah another thing I want to show you it's uh, coming back let's get uh, 
rid of all this stuff. One, one way we can uh, uninstrument everything, if you are using like the, the browser and closure script, is to just uh, reload the page. The debugger will figure out that you reloaded the page and, and will get rid of all instrumentation. Uh, or you can like hit here and, and try to uninstrument this one from the browser. So, yeah. Let's try to instrument something a little different. Uh, what happened if we are go if we need to instrument a function like this parse URL query string? Uh, this is running uh, just after the the page loaded. So the problem with instrument this function is we are not going to be fast enough to come here and try to instrument. And uh, and if we instrument, but then we reload the page we are going to uh, replace all the functions but the uninstrumented ones. Uh, that's where we can use uh, the trace tag. So just by typing trace there. And also for using the trace tag, we need somewhere in the app, I'm going to put it on the main, we need to require uh, Flowstorm API. Uh, so it, it's, it's going to bring these uh, reader tags so the compiler knows where they are. So I'm going to save this here. And yeah, now we have instrument that. So now if I uh, reload the page, uh, we should see the, um, the debugger reacting there. Okay, so now we can step over this function, which is doing some string splits and whatnot. We can step, click around, and inspect everything. So yeah, that is how you uh, trace something that you are, when you're, I mean, this is useful when you're constantly reloading the page, because if you try to instrument from the browser, you need to instrument here, and then you're going to reload the page and you are going to lose instrumentation. So you can, you can just type trace on top of the functions we are working with, and then you can safely um, reload uh, your page. And uh, yeah, so, the last thing I want to demo here, it's a tab functionality that's also pretty, pretty useful. Uh, let's get rid of this. Um, so yeah, uh, you, can, you can use this tabs tab. Let's say we want to let's go to a different file um, here. So we have, if we have here an, an animation, this has some animations and, and you can control the speed of the animation by clicking on this, uh, on this thing. Uh, how many days per second is going to simulate and um, yeah let's say we want to uh, every time the animation change we probably want to see how the uh, database for example uh, has changed so we can tap it here this is going to just use a closure tab but it's going to return the value and this is pretty handy because you just leave that there and whenever you change the animation speed here, you are going to see a tab here changing. Okay, whenever that piece of code runs, um, and you can double click. It's since you tap this, you can double click here. Um, yeah, explore whatever value you just tap it, which is uh, pretty handy. Again, you can define it for the REPL if you if you are interested. In keep working from the REPL. And um, yes, same thing as uh, as in closure, we can use. I'm not going to demo this here because I demoed it in a different video. But you can by using the REPL, you can connect to the. You can use the uh, indexes API, uh, so you can write code that explore whatever you have just traced. It, uh, in, in case the, in case the, the debugger UI doesn't provide the functionality. Uh, and you want to do something else. Um, but yeah, that's all I had. I hope uh, people find this useful. Uh, yeah, see you on the next video. Cheers, bye.